So both the JBL Flip 6 and JBL Charge 5 are two great sounding speakers from JBL that got significant speaker setup upgrades from their predecessors. Specifically, both the Flip 6 and Charge 5 now have a dedicated tweeter, which really does help them with their instrument separation. But there is a middle child here that we need to address, and that is the JBL Pulse 4. Now, the Pulse 4 looks amazing. There is no denying that. But definitely do not pick the speaker up if sound quality is your main priority. Now regarding pricing, the Flip 6 retails for $130, the Charge 5 retails for $180, and the JBL Pulse 4 now retails for $250. Pretty steep if you ask me, because when the speaker first came out, it used to retail for $200. But due to inflation, now we're here. Long story short, with the Pulse 4, you are mainly paying for the light feature, but if you want better sound, you definitely want to go with either the Flip 6 or Charge 5. Nonetheless, if you want to pick any of these speakers up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch shelf down below. I've made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And if you've been watching me for a while, you know I can be very particular. So I'll only set my name on something that I'm really proud of. Now first, let's talk about the design of these speakers. Both the Charge 5 and Pulse 4 are mid-size speakers, and transporting either of these speakers isn't too bad. However, the Flip 6 is notably smaller than these other two speakers, and it also has a built-in loop. So with this speaker, you can easily hang it from something if you really wanted to. And the Flip 6 fits in your bike's water bottle holder, which I know a lot of cyclists like to do. Now, even though technically the Pulse 4 is easy enough to carry around with you, this isn't the best speaker to take on the go with you because of its mostly acrylic body. So you definitely want to be careful about not scratching or cracking this body. Whereas with these other two speakers, they have most the fabric wrap body, so they're going to be able to better stand up to constant abuse. Now, even though all of these speakers are technically waterproof, personally, I would avoid getting the Pulse 4 wet, because this is actually my second Pulse 4. My first Pulse 4 died of water damage. So overall, what I'm trying to say here is, both the Flip 6 and Charge 5 are good, durable, portable speakers. But if you want the most portability, then go with the Flip 6 pretty obvious. Whereas with the Pulse 4, this speaker is better used strictly as an indoor speaker, both because of its durability and speaker setup. However, one area where the Pulse 4 really shines is its light feature. The Pulse 4 really does have an amazing looking light feature. It is very dynamic and it is very bright. And through JBL's app, you've got a few different lighting modes to choose from. You can make your own and you can even customize the color of your light feature so that it matches the rest of your RGB lights in your room if you've got them. Simply put, JBL really kills it when it comes to their light feature. However, if you decide to use this light feature, it will take its toll on the battery life. Now, speaking of battery life, this is another reason why you would mostly want to use the Pulse 4 as an indoor speaker, because this speaker does like to live on the charger. Now, the Pulse 4 has an advertised battery life of 12 hours, but real world use with the speaker playing at 80% volume and with the light feature set to 50% brightness, the speaker is only good for about 6 hours of playback time. And actually, the Pulse 4 has a slightly smaller battery than the one found in the Charge 5. Now, the Pulse 4 has a 7,260 milliamp hour battery, whereas the Charge 5 has a 7,500 milliamp hour battery. And since the Charge 5 doesn't have a light feature to power, the speaker has an advertised battery life of 20 hours. And real world use with the speaker playing at 80% volume, the speaker is good for about 10 hours of playback time. Not bad at all. And then there's the Flip 6, which has a 4800 milliamp hour battery and it has an advertised battery life of 12 hours. And real world use with this speaker playing at 80% volume, this speaker is good for about 8 hours of playback time. So again, if you're looking for portability, then either the Flip 6 or Charge 5 are better options than the Pulse 4 because they have better battery lives. Now, when it comes to charging these speakers, all of these speakers charge via a USB-C port, as they should. However, on both the Flip 6 and Pulse 4, this is the only port that you will find on these speakers. Whereas with the Charge 5, it has a USB-A out port, so that you can charge your own devices. Now, personally, I think it's great and all that the Charge 5 has a USB-A out port, but I feel this USB-A out port is going to become obsolete in the near future, because most phones these days now just come included with USB-C cables. And it's also very important to keep in mind mind that you can't use a wired connection with any of these speakers because none of these speakers have an audio jack and the USB-C port on all of these speakers are strictly used for charging. For right now, you can only use these speakers wirelessly.
Now, when it comes to wireless connectivity, all of these speakers have zero latency across the board when watching movies or videos on your phone. Whether you're using an iPhone or an Edge device, all of these speakers can be connected to two devices at the same time, which is great either if you're a power user, because this way you can easily and quickly hot swap from one device to another, or this way you and a friend can both be DJ. And when it comes to audio codecs, all of these speakers are still using SBC, which is pretty standard for JBL. Personally, I just wish JBL would at least move on to AAC. But now let's talk about actually listening to music with these speakers. Now regarding speaker setups, the Pulse 4 has the least impressive setup here. The Pulse 4 has a single upward firing transducer, so if you want to get the best sound out of this speaker, you do want to use it indoors so that its sound has a ceiling to bounce off of. And the Pulse 4 has a single downward firing passive radiator. And since this radiator bounces its sound off of the table, the Pulse 4 has an impressive amount of bass given that it only has one passive radiator. Radiator. And when it comes to output, the Pulse 4 is rated at 20 watts. But then there are the Flip 6 and Charge 5, which both have a single frontward firing woofer, a frontward firing tweeter, and dual passive radiators that shoot out the sides. Now, the woofer on the Charge 5 is rated at 30 watts, and the tweeter is rated at 10 watts. Whereas with the Flip 6, its tweeter is also rated at 10 watts, but its woofer is rated at 20 watts. Nonetheless, both the Flip 6 and Charge 5 have much more impressive speaker setups than the Pulse 4, which really does help them sound much more open but let me just show you a broken glass while i'm thinking in my head mm. i mind my own i don't even break a sweat oh this matters is insane why you still live in vain i'm not the one you're the victim of your own mistakes it's sad to me that i So, like you may have just seen, both the Flip 6 and Charge 5 have a woofer which focuses on the mids and they both have a tweeter which focuses on the highs. So, this speaker setup does help them sound much more open. Whereas with the Pulse 4, since the transducer is doing both the mids and highs, this speaker does sound narrow by comparison. But now we're going to jump into the sound test. All of these speakers are playing with their stock EQ, both the Charge 5 and Pulse 4 are playing at 70% volume, whereas the Flip 6 is playing at 81% volume. Create a song uh -huh. 
So first let's focus on the Pulse 4 because the speaker sounds and performs very differently than these other two speakers. Like I mentioned earlier, since the speaker has a single upper front transducer, the Pulse 4 sounds much more narrow than these other two speakers that have a dedicated tweeter and a dedicated woofer. But also, since the Pulse 4 shoots the majority of its sound upwards, if you want to get the best performance out of it, you want to use it indoors so that its sound has a ceiling to bounce off of. But speaker setup aside, the bass on the Pulse 4 can be a little overpowering, and the highs are a little too emphasized, making the speaker sound narrow and nasally. And then there's max volume. The speaker gets almost as loud as the Flip 6, but for sure, the speaker doesn't get as loud as the Charge 5. Overall, the Pulse 4 sounds decent and it gets the job done, but if you're getting the speaker, you are mainly getting it because of its light feature. But now let's move on to the Charge 5 and Flip 6. From a performance standpoint, both JBL speakers sound as open and have the same instrument separation as one another. And I can't stress this enough, they have way better instrument separation than the Pulse 4. However, with the Charge 5, you are going to get noticeably more bass and it's also going to get louder as well. Whereas with the Flip 6, I can't help but feel that this speaker is a little quicker to juice up the highs. So the Flip 6 can at times sound a little brighter, whereas the Charge 5 sounds more balanced. Nonetheless, both of these speakers like to put an emphasis on the vocals and the bass comes in hard when it has to. However, with both of these speakers, you can now directly customize their EQ to your liking. And this is a pretty big deal because JBL has taken forever to add an adjustable EQ to their speakers. And this is actually a feature the Charge 5 didn't launch with initially. So you definitely want to upgrade your firmware. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Pulse 4 got an adjustable EQ in the near future as well. Now personally, I like my Charge 5 just the way it is, whereas with the Flip 6, I like it with its bass up one click and the treble down one click. But with all that being said, regarding sound quality, the Charge 5 is the best option here. It has great instrument separation, it has more bass than the Flip 6, and it gets louder. And it now even has an adjustable EQ. The Flip 6 also sounds great, but it doesn't get as loud and it doesn't have as much bass. And with this speaker, I really recommend that you go in and at least lower the treble. But without a doubt, the Flip 6 sounds way better than the Pulse 4. The Pulse 4 sounds good enough to get the job done, but you are mainly paying for that light feature. But finally, let's talk about pairing these speakers up with other speakers. Now, all of these speakers are using JBL's Party Boost, meaning that you can pair them up with other JBL Party Boost speakers, like either a JBL Boombox 2, a recently announced JBL Boombox 3, an Extreme 3, a Charge 5, a Flip 5, a Flip 6, a Pulse 4, or also a recently announced JBL Pulse 5.
And you can pair up to 100 speakers together, which is obviously overkill. And the fact that JBL is using Party Boost on all of their more recent speakers and has been confirmed that their upcoming speakers like the Boombox 3 and Pulse 5 are all still using Party Boost, I don't think you gotta worry about your speakers becoming obsolete all of a sudden. Like when we went from the Flip 4 to the Flip 5 and JBL just decided to introduce a new speaker pairing protocol, which just wasn't backwards compatible. Basically what I'm saying is that I think Party Boost is going to still be here for a while. However, it is very important to keep in mind that you can only pair a JBL Party Boost speaker to another JBL Party Boost speaker. You cannot pair a Party Boost speaker to an older JBL Connect Plus speaker. Now, I know this sucks, but JBL Party Boost does have better range than JBL Connect Plus. Also keep in mind, if you want to get left and right stereo sound going, you're going to need two of these same speakers. So let's say for example, you've got a Flip 5 and you're thinking about getting a Flip 6. Unfortunately, these two speakers will not play in left and right stereo mode. They'll play in sync, but not in left or right stereo mode. And I'm assuming that this is also going to apply to the JBL Boombox 2 and the upcoming JBL Boombox 3. And it's also going to apply to the Pulse 4 and the upcoming Pulse 5. Because even though the Boombox 3 and Pulse 5 look very similar to their predecessors, they do have new speaker setups. And also keep in mind, you cannot wirelessly pair a JBL Party Boost speaker to any of JBL's larger Party Box speakers. So overall, even though there is some fragmentation to look out for, JBL's Party Boost is still one of my favorite speaker pairing protocols out there because it's super easy to use and it just works. And you've also got a decent amount of speakers to choose from. And for the time being, it doesn't look like Party Boost is going anywhere. But with all that being said, both the JBL Charge 5 and Flip 6 are some of my favorite speakers to recommend right now. And it looks like JBL has been listening to the community. Thanks to the new speaker setups found on the Flip 6 and Charge 5, the speakers have better instrument separation and sound more open. And they both now have an adjustable EQ. But obviously, if you decide to go with the Charge 5, you are going to get better sound and better battery life than the Flip 6. However, the Flip 6 is more portable. But if you decide to go with either of these speakers, I don't think that you're going to have to worry about them becoming obsolete in the near future, because it looks like JBL will be sticking to Party Boost for now. And then there's the Pulse 4. This speaker looks amazing, there is no denying that. However, the speaker just doesn't sound as good as these other more affordable speakers, and you're better off using it indoors because of its speaker setup and its real world battery life isn't that good. But I mean, I can't blame it because it has that light feature power. Overall, for me, the Pose 4 is hard to justify given these other two options. But if you're after looks, the Pose 4 will definitely not disappoint in that department. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know, I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something that I'm really proud of.